What's a NSFW history fact that we don't often hear about? The British Academy of Science redacted massive amounts of the first published observations of penguins by biologists. Penguins are the worst. So much rape. So much necrophilia. The Academy decided the public wouldn't handle it well. Julius Wagner Jareg won the 1927 Nobel Prize for Medicine by giving people malaria the fever from the malaria would go so high that it could kill off an otherwise untreatable syphilis infection. Left untreated syphilis could lead to insanity, so it was pretty bad thing. In comparison, having malaria, which we had treatments for, was a blessing. In the Ottoman Empire, the Sultan's wife could only eat her cucumbers chopped so that she doesn't masturbate. In July 1184, Henry VI, King of Germany, later Holy Roman Emperor, held court at a Hoftag in the Petersburg Citadel in Erfurt. On the morning of July 26, the combined weight of the assembled nobles caused the wooden second-story floor of the Peterskirch to collapse, and most of them fell through into the latrine cesspit below the ground floor, where about 60 of them drowned in liquid excrement. There is a man named Eben Byers, who is entombed in Pittsburgh's Allegheny National Cemetery. He was a golf pro and socialite who ended up being the victim of quack medicine. He consumed so much radithor, radium dissolved in water, that just prior to his death his jaw literally eroded off of his face. His mausoleum has him in a lead coffin because he's still radioactive. Ammonia-rich fumes from a castle's toilet system were used to delouse clothes inside special closets. After Napoleon's death, it's been alleged, and told to me by a historian at Lesson Ballads, that his penis was cut off and sold and exhibited through the early 20th century. It was described in 1927 as a resembling a piece of leather or a shriveled eel. William C. Minor, one of the contributing writers of the Oxford English Dictionary, chopped off his penis using the pocket knife he used to cut the bound pages of his old first edition book. Rome lost as many soldiers in one battle as the United States lost in the entirety of the Vietnam War. It was the Battle of Kenny in 216 BC against Hannibal. And this was back when the entire world population was tiny compared to what it is now. Rome lost 20% of its adult male population in a single day. Edit, Extra Credits did a great series on the Punic Wars. At the beginning of World War II, in Great Britain, over 750,000 domestic animals were euthanized out of fear that rations would be spread too thin and pet abandonment would lead to masses of strays. The National Air Raid Precautions Animal Committee, NARPAC, sent pamphlets out to homes suggesting that people should send their pets to the countryside or, kindly, have them destroyed. This later became known as the British Pet Massacre. It used to be thought that blowing smoke up someone's ass was a way to revive them. Some swimming pools actually had a kit with a bellows-type device to blow smoke up the ass of a drowning victim. Edited, to clarify tobacco smoke. Romans used to execute criminals in the Colosseum by recreating myths. A woman was raped to death by a specially trained bull, Pacifi. A man was given wings and thrown across the Colosseum, Icarus, another was made to play an instrument and then be torn apart by animals, Orpheus, and many, many more. Edit, the main source is Marshal de Spectaculus I'm uninterested in debating his reliability when he wrote the piece to commemorate specific events that had anywhere between 50-87k eyewitnesses writers tend to fail when the entire city calls them out for making stuff up. The reason powder wigs were so popular among the wealthy was because it covered up the smell and sores of syphilis. Didn't the author of Frankenstein lose her virginity on her mother's grave? The CIA gave unsuspecting civilians LSD and then observed their interactions with hookers, paid informants, while under the influence, for experimental purposes. This operation was called Midnight Climax Edit for Clarity. Added sources for your infotainment. Boston Corbett, the guy who killed John Wilkes Booth, Lincoln's assassin, was a raging lunatic who cut his own balls off with a pair of scissors after passing a couple of prostitutes on the street. 
He did not seek medical attention after he did that until after he had gone to a prayer meeting and had dinner. He also escaped from an insane asylum on horseback and was never seen again. John Art Brinkley was an American doctor who would surgically implant goat testicles into men's scrotums to cure impotence. His story gets crazier from there. Anton Leeuwenhoek, the father of microscopy, used his invention, the microscope, on his own sperm after one night with his wife. Sperm was unknown at the time and he thought they were little people. Felix IV, French president from 1895 to 1899, died while getting head. James Joyce had a fart fetish, he often wrote about it in letters to his lover. You had an arse full of farts that night, darling, and I fucked them out of you, big fat fellows, long windy ones, quick little merry cracks, and a lot of tiny little naughty fart eyes ending in a long gush from your hole. It is wonderful to fuck a farting woman when every fuck drives one out of her. In ancient Egypt, the pharaoh would periodically masturbate into the Nile as a ritual of sorts to guarantee good harvests. Brazilian emperor built a huge personal library just so he could freely shag his mistresses without being bothered. The Mongols had a rule, you're not allowed to kill the leader of a country or city-state by piercing their skin. So they came up with ingenious ways of killing people. There were stories of a potential con that boiled a man alive, other stories include pouring molten gold down a man's throat. Though not necessarily NSFW, Genghis Khan gave cities the option of surrendering or face the option of killing every man, woman, and child in that city. He would literally genocide everyone in that city because the ruler wanted to fight back. And that's how Genghis Khan killed 10% of the world's population at that time, 20 to 40 million people. When the future Edward VII balked at his mistress's account saying, Madam I have spent enough on you to build a battleship. She replied, and you have spent enough in me to float one. Hawaiian kings commonly had harems of both male and female lovers. The first European to make a Hawaiian to English dictionary didn't want to scandalize his Victorian readers so translated the term for the male lovers to something like intimate friend. This caused some degree of confusion when missionaries arrived asking to become the intimate friends of the Hawaiian nobility. Hitler was very anti-drugs in the 1930s. By the end he was on barbiturates, methamphetamines, coke and amphetamines. Egyptian women used crocodile poo as a contraceptive. They shoved it up their vagina to block the sperm, and because it was acidic, they killed the sperm. It worked. President Lyndon B. Johnson was obsessed with his penis and used it to control those around him. He gave it the nickname Jumbo. He threatened senators by saying he was gonna sleep with their wives, and if he went to the bathroom in the middle of a conversation, he expected the other person to follow him into the bathroom to continue the conversation and would get upset if they tried to just wait outside. Sometimes he would swing around while standing at a urinal and talking to someone, leaving his genitals exposed. He also drove himself around on his ranch and stopped to pee on the side of the road so the secret service agents had to cover him, and there was a gust of wind that blew the pee onto one of the agent's legs and Johnson said that it was his prerogative to pee on the agent's leg. Journalists once asked him why continue the war in Vietnam, and he sent all the women out of the room, took his penis out, flopped it on the table and said this is why. Thomas Jefferson had syphilis and loved hookers. The raping of local women was commonly seen as a mean to keep invading soldiers' morale high. Local women would cover the faces with charcoal, ash and dirt to be unattractive so as to avoid the same predicament. Some even went as far as harming themselves to produce unappealing scars on their faces and bodies.